Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Relative Motion live stream. I'm really excited to be showing you guys a uh, video. Let me know and make sure my sound's working, if you guys can hear me okay. I'm not sure it is, actually. So if you guys can hear me, let me know. But we're going to be taking a look today at the Trevor Jacobs story that's circulating the internet right now. And this is just too interesting for me to pass by. Um, it's a really interesting story about a guy who's a YouTuber who crashed his plane. Um, and there's a lot of speculation, I guess, going around the internet that this was maybe done on purpose. So we're going to go deep into the subject today. And uh, my uh, my name's James Bodie. I'm an aircraft mechanic. And not that I totally think that matters here because this is just an opinion. And I think anyone can have an opinion about what this guy did. Um, but it is just an opinion not facts so and uh part of the problem is uh because uh, this jacobs character uh i'll call him mr jacobs he hasn't released much information about this crash so unfortunately because of that there's a lot of speculation to be made because we don't have a lot of information but i'm going to show you what we do and um just to jump into this first i'm actually not going to show you the jacobs crash i'm going to show you a um a different crash, but everybody lived. It was actually a successful landing, um, but it was an engine out uh, situation. And I just want to show this for maybe a comparison of what um, it certainly can look like. So I'm going to launch this first video here. Now, I think this was with a, um, it's actually between an instructor and a pilot, which doesn't make sense because one guy has a camera here. So maybe that's not true, but. But, uh, I just pulled this video up quickly. Um, I didn't do much research on it, to be honest, but I just I think this gives you a good idea of what an engine failure can really look like. And especially, you'll notice when I show you the second video, this guy is a lot closer to the ground. So obviously they're different situations, but here's your engine failure. I guess one of the first things I'd like you to notice is how he's starting the engine multiple times. I'll explain a little bit more after he lands here. That's a happy man there. So I'll stop there, I guess. But um, I guess a few things you can see. First of all, obviously, they land the plane, which this guy we're about to watch wasn't successful with doing. Um, but even though the engine failed and they were pretty close to the ground, they were able to get it, you know, they used the engine maybe two or three times there, it looked like, to get a little more speed they were trying to do, or at least just try to get the engine going. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into now the Trevor Jacobs video, and we'll see if anything looks a little different. So... I'll just shut up through this one so you guys can watch it through unobstructed the whole first time.
watches it from the air. go. Okay, so obviously there's a lot to unpack here, um, and that's not even nearly the whole video, but um, I'm going to start off, I guess, by just rewinding here, I guess, and... Um, so I, I'm just going to start off obviously with the first video or any aircraft in general, typically, you know, the air, the, the pilot will try and land the aircraft if at all possible. Um, in maintenance, we talk about three major things, obviously everything in, on an aircraft is important, but there's really three really critical areas that people will talk about with an aircraft. Um, one is the engine uh, and that's what we're seeing here and obviously because without an engine you become a glider basically um so that's extremely critical the other critical thing is your landing gear which just basically means if you're not familiar with aviation is the wheels basically um and obviously because if you don't have wheels it's hard to land and you're probably going to crash land and then the last which i actually think is a little bit more important than the other two is flight controls and that has to do with the actual aer aerodynamic controls that you use to control the plane once it's in the air. And so if you lose the engine, which is what happened here, obviously you can still use it as a glider, which this guy didn't seem to have any inkling to do. Um, and basically just bailed out of the plane. But I will say too, you know, being a YouTuber and having some experience video editing, um, Obviously, he could have cut the video there and not shown everything that's going on. But first of all, that really makes no sense to me because it's the most important part of the video almost. And you'd think he would want to show that stuff. So first of all, it's very odd that there's no... Um, I mean, he obviously has cockpit cameras. Let's see if I can find one. He's got, I mean, let's just start off with the fact he's got one on his wrist to begin with for a routine flight. But... Um, I think there's four cameras in total on this plane, Not maybe not even including the one on his wrist. So seems like an odd, oddly large amount of cameras to capture stuff. And I've gone through some of his other videos, and it doesn't seem like the he, he has his camera. He has that many cameras on his other plane, which I get. I, I'm jumping all over the place here, but I guess that gets me to the point of... Um, so this airplane he's flying, he actually just recently bought... Um, a month before, or I'm sorry, I don't know if it was a month before, but within, I think, the last month, very recently, and um, I've also heard the people he bought it from, he said he was going to do something special with it, but again, that's, I think, you can take that however you want, but seems a little odd thing to say, and so he, this is a brand new plane he got, and I will be the first to say, I think, the fact that it's a new plane doesn't have to necessarily, or I'm sorry, it's not a new plane, but it's a new owner of a plane. You know, those are the, typically the times that you would see an accident when you maybe you get the new plane or, um, yeah, never mind that. I, I'm going to skip that part because this is such an old airplane. I think that's kind of irrelevant, but I guess that's an important fact, fact to bring up as well is, this is pretty much an 80 year old airplane. Um, I think it was, it's a Cub Crafter. I'm remembering the name right, but it's old, what they call bush plane for landing kind of more on, um, not necessarily like typical runways. Um, they're actually made for landing more in back country, which is the other interesting point that it gets to you in this video is that's obviously where he is in this video is out in the back country. Um, and the reasoning he uses is basically, oh, I'm over the mountains, so I'm going to crash. Um, that's definitely not necessarily the case. You, I think, I mean, I'm sure there's been successful, uh, crash landings in the mountains before where people have lived. So that's, 
um, not necessarily true. And people have really dissected this video to length about where he is exactly and all the potential spots he could land and everything. I'm not going to go into all of that, but I do think this video here that someone else did is worth we'll looking at just to show you. Obviously, this is a flight simulator, and but it's dead. We can't it's using the, the same engine. map. You know, this is exactly the same as the world, and we're in the exact same spot. So, um, we're, I'll just show you here. Yeah, this an guy outside view in Bruce, reality. Even with an engine out. So I've spotted that area. I think it could even land in the river. His engine's already out at this point. And people have I also mean, made yeah, the point. Gonna hurt. The and river. going to break some bones. But you're still right. going to be in one piece. Your plane is not going to be in one piece. But you haven't hurt anyone. And you're still going to get YouTube clout because you've still technically crashed your plane. <laughs> but at least you've That's tried to rescue too. it. All right, let's, let's that fast is now going to balloon. It's fine. We need to cut off this. We're going to land over here on the right. Maybe that looks site. like a pretty good spot. Oh no. Chosen our landing site. He's just going to yeah. go. That is where but we're going to go. As you can see, we're going to put more you know, flaps down because we're going like to. over. I think so maybe one of the worst situations right, is actually again. Get, you're over a Flaps super dense forest. You pretty patch. much have to crash land yeah. because you can't land on trees. We've so chosen this with patch. this nice mountainous going. area, there's obviously clear spots. We need to get it and... down there. So we need control. We could even right. have landed in that on, river. I'll land this plane. Control it. Control it. Contour it to the terrain. We're down. And if you guys have any questions for me, too, about what... If you've seen right, this or right, whatever, right. feel free to ask me down in the comments. Um, there we go. Throughout Can't this video. Break. All right, so I, we can see here he's successfully landed that. And I, I'm assuming this is the exact same location that this happened. So, um, and there's countless videos like this online showing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so he could certainly have landed this a lot of people are speculating um and i guess that's where this gets a little interesting i think because you know i don't think necessarily being a pi bad pilot is a crime so they have to basically prove this guy intentionally did this um i think to really throw the book at him so to speak which is what people want to have done um and i think the biggest um piece of evidence is going to lie mostly with the cameras that he put on his plane since he put so many on there you know obviously if they're missing that looks pretty suspect but i don't know if that's just because they're missing that's not really admittable in the court of law either um but if if they are intact and they get footage of what's going on in the cockpit and it's obvious that um you know he intentionally stopped the airplane or the end i'm sorry he's intentionally stopped the engine which which causes the airplane to crash, then that's pretty uh, negligible. And the crazy part about this, I guess, is no one's no one's been hurt. So, which is, I mean, I'm not saying that no one could have been hurt. They definitely could have. But the interesting part here is no one was hurt. And, um, you know, they have to... I guess this would have been a lot, unfortunately, stuff like this, it's a lot easier to pursue, pursue more charges if people get hurt. But the biggest reason people are upset, obviously, is when you leave a plane like this, it's a giant missile that goes crashing in the ground. And if there's people on the ground, it can kill them. Not only to mention, too, uh, the forest fire aspect of this whole thing. Um, this plane was, most people believe this plane was full of fuel still. So this could have easily started a forest fire. And this was in California, and it's not like they have enough of that problems already, too. Um, so I'm getting some questions here. I'm going to answer those real quick. Uh, hey, Whitney, uh, is it routine to have a parachute on you while flying small engine planes? Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, it's, and that's, I guess, a different aspect of... Um, this that's interesting. Let me go back to the original video here. Jacob's 
actually, first let me, I'm gonna jump over here, show you a couple more things I think that are really relevant for this, just to give you a little more baseline of what we're talking about here. And then I'll go back into the video some more. Uh, I got a screen share for this, so this might take two seconds here, so bear with me. Um, try and maybe answer another comment here while I'm figuring this out. Um, but I guess back to the parachute thing, it's not necessarily super common um, to have a parachute on any plane. There, it, it's I'd say it's more common actually. To, there's airplanes that have a parachute for the airplane itself. That's more common, but still not common. Um, I think a lot of people have different opinions than me on this, which I've obviously seen from this blowing up. I think it's not the worst idea to have a parachute on board, um, but. The, the whole point of aviation is to make airplanes safe enough that you shouldn't need one on board. Um, so I'm going to stop you up here and get this video or uh, screen share up. Uh, man. Screen share, share screen. I'll figure it out here, people. All right. Oh, wow. There we go. So this is actually what if someone was wearing a parachute, well, you would probably more expect them to wear. And I'm much more proponent of these for the same reason. I mean, obviously for what they're, they're designed, let me get to the point here. They're designed as a seat cushion more than a parachute. So they're, they're designed as an emergency parachute. It's not one you're intended to ever use. It's, but it's there in case of an emergency in your airplane, but it's more made instead of to be a great parachute and be, as, you know, great at being a parachute as possible. It's more made for being comfortable um, sitting in your seat. And you can obviously see that by the kind of shape and especially the little seat cushion flap that almost kind of comes down. Um, and, oh, I forgot I could point over here. So you can see that there, that's where you'd sit. And I think typically these only have one parachute or like a normal parachute will have an actual, the main parachute and then reserve. So these are just one parachute because they're, you just, it's a really bad day if you use using one of these, but, and, and they're also more typically for um, test pilots. I was, you know, people who are in some sort of unsafe condition to begin with, you know, you might be more likely to see them wear something like this, but, well, I'll get back to that in a second when we go back to the video. I wanna show you the rest of what we got over here. Um, so that's that. Um, what other pictures do I have here? Oh, so there's a bigger picture of that. Um, so this I wanted to look, we'll look at this real quick actually, then we'll go back to the video because I want to show you something in the video before I show you those other pictures. But um, this is all the reasons for typical engine f failures um, that you would see in a piston engine. I think this is just piston engines. Um, but if you look at this chart, um, first of all, what kind of stands out to me, and in general, I think the stat is like 90% of airplane crashes happen within a couple miles of an airport. And that's because it's really typically pretty rare for the crash to happen in the middle of cruise flight. Um, which is what seems like kind of happened here. Maybe his climb out. I'm, I'm not quite sure because he cuts so much of the video. It's really honestly hard to tell what happened in the video. But, um, you know, only this, and this honestly seems a little high. I would have thought it's lower than that. But you're less likely to encounter a serious issue in the middle of cruising to an engine. And I think that's kind of odd. And then because... Um, I mean, I'll, just, I'll say this now. It, it's pretty obvious to me, it seems like in this video, that this is not a catastrophic engine failure. And I guess what I mean by that is it's it's not so sudden that you it seizes the engine up and it can't spin at all anymore. And I guess that first video I showed you, if you were around for that, where I showed you that first plane um, crash landing, that's a good example of another not completely seized engine because he was able to use the starter again and try and start the engine and and get some more power out of it. Um, and typically, if it's an issue like that, it's gonna be, I don't know, I, 
I hate being so generalistic like this because it's not always the case, but I think it's likely caused by uh, a fuel shortage or starvation in the engine, which causes the engine to cease working. And it certainly sounds like that's what happens in this video, but based on the, the slow dying of the engine, I mean, it just sounds like there's nothing catastrophic that happens. And so we're gonna get more into, well, I guess I can do that right now. I changed my mind. So we'll get a little bit into just a fuel aircraft system here. Um, and I, first of all, should I do this yet? Yeah. So the, let me show you this system actually. So this, this, this system shows you your tanks up here. Um, this is a, oh, here's your, fuel selector valve, which is the same thing you see here. So you got your tanks here, your fuel selector. This is just a different, a little different diagram of the same sort of schematic to hopefully show you a little bit better. But um, so you have that. Um, you have some strainers through the system, which I think are important to see. Um, and is there anything else really worth mentioning? Not really. So um, basically my little hypothesis or whatever you want to call it is somewhere, you know, in this chain of events here, the engine's not getting fuel and that can be a, a whole bunch of different things. But um, if I go back to this chart, hopefully it's on here. So if you look at this chart of the causes over here on the right, um, a lot of these have to do with fuel. You have fuel. I don't know what that, what he's trying to abbreviate there. Is that concentration? Fuel condition, maybe? I don't know. Um, fuel exhaustion, fuel starvation. Um, oh, fuel contamination. That's probably what that's going to be. So these are all... I think, and I think what he's meaning by the difference between fuel exhaustion and starvation is simply, um, and honestly, I couldn't tell you which one means which off the top of my head, but star, I'm going to maybe say exhaustion means that you ran completely out of fuel. So you didn't have enough fuel with you for the trip you were making, basically. And now you don't have any fuel left versus I think fuel starvation is maybe meaning the fuel can't physically get to the engine, even though you have enough fuel on board, if that makes any sense. And then the fuel contamination has to do with the quality of the fuel. So I guess I'll just start some things that might've happened here, if this is a legitimate um, crash is, is, and this happens unfortunately more often than, uh, what, well, let me say this. So unfortunately, there's some bad fuel out there. And if that gets into your plane, it can obviously cause the engine to not work. So if the fuel is not type, not, I mean, this could be multiple things. You put the wrong fuel in, you put in bad fuel. Um, and typically bad fuel is going to be either going to have like microbial growth in it potentially, or um, water. Those are things that can get into your fuel. Um, although admittedly, I think that's less likely here with, with jet fuel and jets, that's a lot more of an issue. Um, I think that's less of an issue with piston planes, not saying that necessarily it couldn't happen. And so that's certainly a possibility. And if this, if this Jacob's character, I'm, I'm, by, I'm by no means ever suggesting anyone do this, but if this Jacob's character had any sort of a brain and he did fake this and he wanted to make it look legitimate, the, you know, there's different ways he could have done that. Like for example, just putting in bad fuel. But problem with that is you don't necessarily know when your engine's gonna, you know, your engine could quit on takeoff and there's pretty likely scenario you're not gonna make it out of that alive. So this, I find it questionable that this guy purposely sabotaged his own plane to make it look legitimate. Cause he honestly, he just doesn't seem like that bright of a guy <laughs> in some of the video or what he pulled off here. But, um, I guess let's not put it past them. 
So, and the other possibility is he figured out exactly where he wanted to run out of fuel and he only put enough fuel in there for running out of fuel at that exact moment. But again, it just doesn't, I just don't think that's the case here. I don't think this guy was <laughs> thinking that far ahead. Um, but, you know, it certainly is, this, this airplane's 80 years old and I'm not going to put it out of the question of, possibility this guy legitimately had an engine failure because i think at this point we don't know but um it's not i'll just be honest it's not looking great for him i'm going to go back to here see if we have any questions but um yes it is odd that he had a selfie stick as well, ready to go jumping out of the plane. Um, I'm a, I like the term in this situation of looking at the totality of circumstance, I think is what they call it. And it's not focusing too much on any single one um, discrepancy or whatever you want to call it with this story. It's looking at the overarching narrative and everything. And if you look at that, I just don't think it looks great. Uh, Oh, and that's what, so that's what I forgot. Let's get, let's get back into the video here a little bit. Get back on track. Get back on track. Uh, is this the right? Yeah. So, now to, I guess to dive in this video a little bit further, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning because I do think this I'm is over interesting. The mountains and I so he, he throws in a little clickbaity, like, short version of the crash at the very beginning. Out. And then I think it's, you should read through this. Yeah, I'm going to break this down as we go through it, actually. Sorry, my camera's right in the way of what I'm trying to read here. Uh, during the flight, I experienced an engine failure over some mountains. So I guess that's not necessarily untrue. There was no safe place to land. Uh, now, that's the part that I think a lot of people are debating. I think a safe landing could have probably easily been pulled off. And that, I don't know if I mentioned this enough earlier, but that is a bush plane. I, I know I mentioned that, but those planes are made to land in like no distance at all. Like a typical piston plane might, I don't know, take a thousand or 2000 feet or something to land. And those planes are made to land in like three, I think that one lands probably in five or 600 feet, I would imagine. It has a, a very low stall speed of like, I'm pretty sure that one's 38 miles per hour. I've heard it so much on this on these videos um, and like a normal plane, I, I'm not going to say what that is off the top of my head because I guess I'm not totally sure. But the, the point is, you know, the slowest stall speeds you ever see are pretty much like 28 miles per hour. That's like an ultralight or something. Um, so 38 is, I mean, it's just a really capable plane of being able to land in the situation he was. Admittedly, is it the most ideal situation in the world? No, it's not. But um, but that gets me back to, again, if he just bails out of his airplane because he's scared and he's just a bad pilot, I don't know, you know how criminal that is because I think a lot of, you know, I, I, I hate bringing this up because I think it's a little controversial, but the, the whole... Um, semi-truck driver i think in colorado was a sort of good analogy to this of you know he ended up um i forgot where i was going. um sorry brain fart there um so i think and everyone you know this guy in my and i'll be honest i haven't followed it totally closely but from what i understand the guy you know, passed a bunch of um, potential, if you haven't heard the story, just to make it short, I guess, this guy had a semi-truck out in Colorado in the mountains and his brakes failed. 
and he went barreling down this mountain and they have in Colorado what are called runoff ramps for that exact situation where you can basically crash land your your semi truck if you want to think of it that way since we're talking about that in this video you you crash up this ramp to basically try and stop the runaway truck and this guy blew past two or three of those and ended up crashing his truck into a bunch of people and killing them and he got pretty much a life sentence for it and people are upset about that and because he didn't really intend and rightfully so you know i'm not saying the guy did or anything but he didn't intend to do that so that's just too harsh of a sentence for a guy who did something on accident and i think that's a similar situation here is if they can't prove he actually meant to crash this plane it's basically he was just a terrible pilot and you know i just find the whole thing interesting i guess is all i'll say but um get back to this video there is obviously a safe place to land i showed you with that other video that the other guy demonstrated so he jumps from his plane deploys parachute I, I guess you guys can read i don't need to read this to you but um so this is the other part that's questionable he says i notified the faa and ntsb immediately um you probably know what the faa is but if you don't know what the ntsb is mm -hmm. It's uh, National Transportation Safety Board, I think is what it stands for. And they're the ones who investigate all the accidents. And they're definitely the ones that are going to be very curious about this. And some people have said because people haven't died in this, that they're not really going to investigate that much. And because this kind of, you know, this stuff does happen. So they, they can't investigate to the fullest every single case. But I would imagine with this, because it's getting so much publicity, they're going to they're going to get to the very bottom of what is going on here to unfortunately sort of make an example out of this guy whether you think that's right or wrong that's the way it works uh -huh. so to get back to this he notified them immediately i'm not going to show you the whole video um and i guess to be honest while i'm on that point i would encourage you maybe to not go watch this guy's footage like everyone else is because that's the unfortunate part of why people do this to begin with because i guess at the end of the day whether you know he wanted bad or good publicity his plan worked that this got him publicity so the more we and, and i'm obviously being a hypocrite doing a video about this because i'm getting you know i'm promote i'm i don't want to say promoting doing this i'm definitely not but i'm furthering the i think you get my point but um i just would encourage you maybe to not go watch his videos and especially his you know if you watch other people's videos about what happened, I think that's just much better because I think you're letting him win in some small way, maybe if you watch his videos, but that's just a small side tangent. Um, but, you know, so I think he says something else here too. Yeah, this is, this is what I think was one of the more interesting statements. I didn't think I would have the courage to share this footage, but I feel a lot of pilots can learn from my experience. And that's the unfortunate part here is this guy was obviously not a good pilot from all of whatever, you know, full disclaimer, I'm not a pilot. I'm a mechanic. So everything I'm saying here is from a, I guess, maintenance and my own point of view. But um, I do know a little bit about flying from being involved in maintenance. But this just, this is like the worst training video if that's what he was intending for this and that's and, th and this is really the whole thing that just puts this in perspective to me for this comment because you know it's obvious to me from this video if you watch it from the start to finish that it's it's not about teaching people to to learn anything it, the video is about him and his experience with this whole thing and obviously from the the little tiny bit he put in there of the plane actually having the failure, there's nothing to really be learned. So I, I just think this is pretty ridiculous, you know, and, and, and just the amount, you know, if this was the case, the amount of unnecessary stuff he puts in this video, like, and I think if I continue this, we'll just get right into it. And this, okay, I guess I have to pause here because this really makes me angry because I, like I was saying, and unfortunately, I don't want to, you know, 
parachutes are getting a lot of hate right now, but I'm a big proponent of parachutes. I just, I don't see the, the negative, but I think the biggest negative is the rap they get because of idiots like this. And, you know, um, it's just a mentality thing, I think. I, I, I've seen firsthand, and I'm not going to say whether it was a pilot or a mechanic. I'm not saying where it was, but I have seen where just because someone has a parachute, all of a sudden they get like a chip on their shoulder or something and feel invincible. And I think that's that, you know, if, if the end result of you having a parachute on your plane, whether it's the airplane having it or you yourself having it, is you're more risky and you're more likely to cause a crash now or what, you know, I think you get my gist. That's where parachutes can be bad. And that's, you know, this guy is continuing to propagate that, ad, you know, this negative attitude towards parachutes, which drives me nuts because I really, I think they can be a good thing. And it's unfortunate that these people do this. And I, you know, I don't think you necessarily always have to have a parachute with you. Like, I'm not going to say if you fly a parachute, you fly an airplane without a parachute, you're an idiot. I don't, you know, I think airplanes are safe. I just don't, you know, it's like, it's like wearing safety glasses or a seat belt or something, you know, and I don't even think a parachute will save you as much as those things save you from other stuff. But it's, it's just increasing your odds if you have the right attitude, I think. So I just don't see the, the negative from that side of it. Um, but I, I guess to speak on to, the um man i'm having brain farts today sorry about that to speak on him jumping out of the airplane so quick too like i, I guess you back if you heard what i said earlier about the critical flight systems being the landing gear the flight controls and the engine to me the biggest reason to have and, and if you're a pilot you can correct me on this if i'm crazy with this idea but to me, the biggest reason to have a parachute is in situations, and this has happened, where flight controls lock up. And in that situation, you pretty much are helpless. I mean, you can't, you, you know, because you can still crash land, I think, and potentially live in the situations where you don't have an engine or you don't have landing gear or a way to land. You can still try to land. If, if you have a stuck control and it just makes you permanently go you know, straight towards the ground, that's what happened in the movie Flight, if you've ever seen that, even though that was fake. But um, in those situations, there's really nothing you can do. But honestly, in those situations, you're going to have a really hard time, I think, getting out of the plane anyways, because the plane is going to be catastrophically out of control. But, you know, you have a fighting chance at that point to at least maybe live where I think obviously without a parachute you have no chance and that's why i think flight controls are maybe the most important system at the end of the day and like benjamin here uh pointed out pilots are also pilots actually i mean if i'm being totally honest pilots are the most important part of the aircraft i guess because obviously you can see what happened here where the pilot did the wrong thing and you know the, the airplane is at that the, the airplane for the most part is at the command of the pilot so you know, fault can come back to the pilot a lot of times, and especially the safer and safer aviation is getting these days between mechanical safety and other, you know, different things. More and more, it's the pilot's fault because he's the only equation left, or he's the only part of the equation left that can, you know, is a human being and can make errors. And so, well, I don't know if that's the best way of saying that, but I think you catch my drift. Um, but anyways, I just, I, I can't leave this up here enough, please, because it just irritates me so much that he threw this in here and he's destroying the idea I like of wearing parachutes and airplanes personally. And again, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but, um, what's so happening? Please wear How's your parachute? My name's Trevor <laughs> Jacob. We are here at the end of the runway. Going to go so, fly the 1942. This is going to get into why right here. Right after he just says, you know, I wasn't sure about posting this video because I was, you know, nervous that I was just nervous what people would react. He still puts in this, and I'm not dissing, I guess, this first part. I think this is mammoth first, And uh, do some paragliding, do some snowboarding. It's going to be a super good time. I got my best friend, Johnny Strange's Ashes with me. We are going to dead friend. go paraglide off of one of his favorite mountains up in the Sierra Nevadas and uh, spread some of those. So, so I, uh, okay, I'll just pause it right here to talk about 
that elephant in the room, I guess. So I guess, I guess, sorry, this is so all over the place. I wish it was more put together, but I'm not great at these live streams yet. It's really what this boils down to. I'm used to cutting and editing videos, but um, this full, this guy's full name is Trevor Jacob. He, he's from California. You can tell, I mean, you can kind of tell by his accent. He's like a, got a little bit of the surfer bro accent. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, hang loose, bro. But uh, he's a snowboard. He's an Olympic snowboarder, actually. And he's, I mean, obviously he's very good at it. If you can want, if you can watch some of his videos. I obviously encouraged you earlier not to watch his videos, but um, he, and I think he's, I've seen him. I saw a video on his channel actually where he built a skate park in a, out of his house basically. It's actually the coolest video of his I saw. Mo honestly, most of his other videos I didn't really care for, but it was just an example of it. This whole story is too bad because this is a guy who he proved he was capable of making good content and he had to just focus on that and not do these st alleged stunts that's going on here. Um, so I think that's too bad because that was an interesting video but he's a great sno snowboarder and skateboarder and it's unfortunate that he decided to ruin all that with this it seems but um he's big and because of that you can imagine he's big into they call that action sports stuff like that um but another kind of action sports is skydiving and that's kind of where he gets his big backing and aviate i mean why he flies planes and how he's into aviation i think it's because he's into skydiving um and base, I think he does base jumping too, maybe, but make a long story short, his friend who died, he had another video about that too, which I think is a little, I don't know. I, I think it's great to tribute a friend, but I, I don't know. I, I won't comment on this, I guess, but um, I just think it's, if it is true that this is faked, I think it's just a terrible taste to put bringing your dead friend into this. I guess all I'll say. And even if this wasn't fake, it's just, I don't know. I don't know why. I'm super grateful he'll be joining us. Got to give a shout out to the Ridge. But I don't know if I said that. His friend died base jumping. But, um, but this guy's, I mean... This guy's had his pro. I, I, I don't want to sit here and have sympathy for the guy. If, if you know, obviously, no one should do what he did. If this is if these allegations are true, but um, the guy's had a rough time with his friend dying, and um, his girl. It looks like his girlfriend maybe just left him too, based on his channel, like of a high, like a long time. I think maybe even his wife. So you know, the guy's gone through some hard stuff, and then he just put. I think one of the weird, I mean, he just, he just set himself up for this. And, I'm, and again, I'm not ju justifying what he did, but it's just like, man, because like the last video before this one, he, he posted a video. What did he say? I don't know if I wrote it down, but it was like finding, it was like how to find your purpose in life. And like, it's just weird that this is kind of seems like the purpose he found, but, um, so anyways, I think it's weird that the whole friend thing, I'm, I don't, I don't want to say. Uh, Off of one of his like favorite said, mountains up in the Sierra Nevadas and, you can make and your own spread decision. some of those. So I'm super grateful he'll be joining us. Got to give a shout out to the Ridge Wallet. Now this part, Thank I think is hilarious. For Honey Strange is ashes uh, with me. I wish I had downloaded at this point, but someone, someone already dubbed a commercial together for Ridge Wallet. Um, and that I would encourage you to look up because it's hilarious. Uh, and I'm surprised I haven't heard anything of Ridge Wallet trying to distance themselves from this video or anything. I guess it's giving them some publicity. Again, it's not maybe the publicity they were looking for, like this guy. But I do. Uh oh, stage is falling down. Ah. Okay. Sorry. Um. We'll just leave that like that. That distracted me a little bit. What was I saying? Uh. Let's go to some questions. Or just me sitting here reading them. That's maybe more interesting, right? Sorry. I'm not good at this live stream. I, I got to realize people are here watching me. Uh, yep. 
It's forest fire. It's very good. He didn't do that. Well, and so oh, my mom's here. Hi, mom. Um, my mom asked, did he ever try to restart the plane? Well, and that's the, it doesn't look like he did. And if that's just the, the whole, I mean, there's just nothing about the inside of the cockpit. And again, if this was a training video, that's the most important part. You know, he puts in the Ridge wallet ad into a video he didn't want to post to make money, but then he doesn't put in the most important part. Very odd to me. Like I said, the, the totality of the circumstance is not great. I, I wouldn't throw anyone under the bus for any one of these things. It's just, you add it all up and it starts not looking great. Would an 80 year old plane have a black box? No, probably not. And I don't even think that's a good question. Actually. I don't know. I think, I think more like expensive modern piston engine airplanes have black boxes. I don't work on piston engine aircraft that much, to be honest. I'm more of a jet and helicopter guy is what I've worked on. I have worked on a few piston airplanes, but um, I don't think those have black boxes for the most part at all. Um, jets, pretty much most jets have them, I think, nowadays. I've seen them in most jets, even private jets. Um, but yeah, a black, that's an interesting point, Whitney. That's, I never thought about that. Uh, black box would be pretty useful here. Um, well, I guess maybe not as much now that I'm thinking about it, not as useful as I would think, because again, I think this all lies in those cameras. Those cameras are going to be ultimately telling um, of what happened here, especially the ones inside. And if they're able to get a hold of that footage. Um, and I, I was just actually glanced at my notes here. This is something I, I meant to mention too. Um, along with the video cards, I think the most damning evidence potentially against him. Oops, pardon my language. Um, is that, you know, at the beginning of this video, he claims he immediately notified people, the NTSB and the AFA, the FAA. Um, and I won't show you the whole video because it's like 20 minutes, but um, like half of the, half, like a lot of the video is him hiking through the mountains after he lands and, um, the whole time he's hiking, he's like, I got no phone service. I've got no phone service. Um, so it'll be with modern phones now, it'd be pretty easy to prove whether or not he had phone service and stuff and whether he was lying about that. I think that could be potentially some pretty good evidence, not in his favor, if they are able to prove somehow he tried to, because that's, I, I didn't get to that part of the video. I don't know if it's worth showing that. I don't want to, because again, I, I would encourage you not to go watch this video on his try channel. Like, I, 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 this is blowing up right now. I was on his, I'm surprised this video honestly doesn't even already have a million views, but I was on, I, you know, I was, I, I've obviously been looking at this video for, I tried to download it so I could, you know, look at it offline at least. So I'm not giving him views and stuff, but, um, I, I just looked to see how many views that video got over the day. Like, yes, just yesterday, it was at like 500,000. It's already at like 650,000. So I guess I'll show you on here so you don't. But I am still running and find the video yourself. So I feel like I'm doing my part. Which I'm oh. a hypocrite for oh, making this video begin with, like I said. But this is so steep. His acting's, I mean, again, my opinion, but that's, let's just get back to. Uh, <laughs> the plane actually flew better when he jumped. That's probably true. That's funny. Um, his acting is just like even when the the I'm, uh, let me let me play this again just to give you some context because I think this this video says a lot. This is this is what it really looks like when your engine goes out. I mean, it's just like, and he never shows any of this. Instant panic. You know, what are we gonna do? Obviously, he's a lot closer to the ground here, which makes him more of a panic. But this guy, he's way in the air and he just loses his mind and just jumps out of the airplane. Like I said, like, we don't know. I, it just seems evident he didn't try to restart it or anything. And 
Oh, I'm getting worked up again. Let's get back to the video here. Would you believe it? No. The That's a funny accent, kind of. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That was the wrong video. Sorry. Um, oh. Okay. Somebody trying to keep oh, my spirits high. Talking about right now. I can't get service. Another hour's gone by. What Walking down the riverbed. It's getting dark. I never noticed that before. I'm just trying to get out of here. I'm not sure if you can hear that. But you can hear a cow. I can hear a cow. Does anyone oh, else see that on his lips? Knees. That's kind of weird, actually. Hear that? Oh. All right. I'm gonna. All right. Feel like I'm gonna try and a mountain lion or a bear could definitely be watching me right now. I, I think uh, it's important. And like I said, I don't want you. Middle of nature. I want. This I want you really to feel like you don't have to go and watch this video yourself because it's. You shouldn't support this later. nonsense. Sorry, that was gross. I am exhausted. Um, I'm so thirsty. I forget I'm live. I'm scared. What is on his lips? Trouble. How did I not? All over the place. The only option I have is it like is a crawling scab through these bushes, falling like I have been for the last five hours. All right. So, anyways, I was trying to show you. Out of here. here. Okay, here he is. So, let's I think let's the universe. Over. So this guy's plane crashes. You know, let's just go back to where I left you guys off. Where it jumps out. So, I'll point out a few other things here that are very strange. Oh, with crusty lips syndrome. That's unfortunate. So, he jumps out of the plane, and he has his parachute on. And he's he's basically, I mean, I, I'm assuming this is staged. So, at this point... I, I hope he picked a decently unpopular... I haven't looked at this area that well in detail, I'll be totally honest, of where exactly this was at the map, like I mean more specifically. So I, I've left that up to other people to do because I trust other people that, like the video I showed you, there's plenty of places to land and stuff. But I'm going to hope he picked a spot to pull this stunt where it's not very populated at least, which it looks like it's not. So... With that said, when you're jumping out of an airplane into an unpopulated mountainous region, you're jumping into a survival situation, which a lot of people have commented on again. And, you know, to this guy, it seems like he's having the time of his life. And that's not even on his mind. He's got a selfie stick and everything. But that, that and again, it's not a crime to be stupid, but, you know, the point I'm getting at here, I guess, is... So you're in a survival situation. You jump out with your parachute. Obviously, I mean, there's, it's, it is possible you jump out the, for the plane and come back and hit you or something. So you want to get far enough from the plane to deploy the chute so it's safe. Like that's, I realize that. But this guy jumps, jumps and goes so far down before he pulls his chute, like to get. Only reason I think is to get awesome footage of this, you know, with his selfie stick that he happens to have. Um, the so the odd thing here is you're jumping out of this plane. You're thinking I'm gonna have to survive. Especially this guy, no, know, knowing. I mean, he he knows his way around the parachute. Obviously, the sooner you deploy that parachute, the further you're gonna be able to glide and have options to get down to the ground safely. Which obviously, I don't think is in this guy's brain because he just jumped out of his airplane trying to make it to the ground safely when. Um, Anyways, so if I guess what I'm saying is if this ever happens to be you, don't wait forever to pull your chute, like pull it as quick as you can. So you have options to, you know, get further to civilization, get closer to water, get whatever the situation is. And which is, again, this is the whole I mean, I, I tried to drop it a second ago, but it's just the odd thing about this is he had so much altitude to begin with in that airplane to do the same thing. So maybe this just isn't even registering this guy's brain that, you know, maybe I should be more worried about where I'm going to land than my selfie stick. But this guy is a professional YouTuber, so he's got one thing on the brain. So let's, let's, let's see how long it takes to open a shoot. 
Oh man! Never saw this coming. I don't know what the glide ratio is of a parachute off the top of my head, but I, I actually have no clue. But let's just say it's eight to one. If he just fell maybe 2,000 feet, or let's say, I don't know, I'm just making up numbers here, but let's say he fell 2,000 feet there, that's like eight to one. That's like almost two miles he could have just saved himself walking, which he obviously starts complaining about towards the end of this video. Like, oh, it's walking I have to do. Well, you, you could have saved yourself a lot of that, not doing your uh, selfie stick nonsense. So I guess getting back on point here. So he, it takes forever to deploy his chute. He lands finally. And then what what's the first thing he goes and does? He goes right to the airplane. And you might wonder why. So, uh, I mean, obviously the thing that jumps to everyone's mind is that he went there to get the camera footage because that's kind of damning to him which he probably at this point i'm assuming he destroyed it like that's definitely his smartest move at this point um so oh god my brain today so <laughs> let's just play this video because I'm gosh. Let's, let's watch this thing. It's so hot out here. I'm freaking. I need water so bad. Oh. Okay, so that's what I was saying. So he climbs back to his plane, and as you say, you know, like I don't think he got to his plane yet at this point. There's an oak. I'm freaking. No, he's. Oh, I don't yeah, know there, that. there he is to his plane. So he's so thirsty. Well, you know what is has a lot of water is my airplane. Um, and admittedly, I think it's somewhere in this video, he says he had water in the airplane. So he, he did himself well there, at least if that is true, having that excuse. So we can buy that or not. Um, Again, I, I realize freak things happen and things can look really bad for the wrong reasons. But it's just, it's not looking great for this guy. That's all I'm going to say. But I'm not trying to say this guy did it for sure either. You know, people are just incredibly stupid too. So, his, so like I said, his first inkling is to go back to the plane. Take that for what you will. Um, and then he goes like foraging doing this scene like he's acting like he's gonna kind of die or something and, uh, with his crazy chap lip so mustache past the point of even saying i'm exhausted it's just I a bad i just just screamed bad yeah. acting I mean, I don't know. that was cool like i could do that oh guys i am exhausted and oh jeez oh Yes. Pretty good, right? Yes. Oh. I see water. Water. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It felt so good. Just... Also, I don't, I don't suggest this. Just drinking water out of a stream. I would probably boil that first. So again, great learning experience here for all the pilots. Jeez. Make sure you drink water. right out of the stream. Oh. Okay, admittedly, it'd be kind of hard for him to boil water, but. And just just one thing after another it just oh thank you Whitney that's another good point and I want my notes are so I wish I had done a better job for my notes for this honestly they're just so jumbled I can't follow them in a good chronological order but she because I just I've watched all these videos about it and when I see something I'm, that sparks my eye I'm like oh that's interesting I'll write it down so when he asked about the radios, that's another thing, like, just blatantly stands out. I don't think this guy made a distress call over his radio 
and again had all the time in the world and that's just like that would be the i'm not even a pilot and that's the first thing i would do you know and a distress i mean it's just like saying like mayday 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 in the radio to whoever's listening like I have no engine, I'm about to crash, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he did any of that. And that's, that is pure insanity because that's your best way of getting help. Mostly, you know, even if they can't help you land the plane, it's your best option for someone at least knowing you crashed out there and sending help. I mean, it's just mind boggling, this, this whole situation. Um, so great question. But once he crashed, I don't think his radios would still work. And he'd probably, I mean, down that low, he probably wouldn't even get have the reception he needs to use them. Um, it's not a crime to be stupid. He does need a chapstick sponsor more than his Ridge wallet. See if any companies are interested in stepping up their game to their extreme chapstick for crashing airplanes. They could sponsor his video. I think I'm pretty much caught up. So let's get back to this genius survivalist here. Gotta keep moving. <sighs> All right, so ground oh, and oh, almost oh. Can hit me. So he he finds, I think he finds a farm, and that's part of the story. But if you want my honest opinion, you don't really see it's any of it. It's dark now. This gets me to, I guess. I think this is when they find the car. Him. Yeah, car finds him, and it's like, I don't know, it almost sounds to me like it's his friend or, or something. It came and picked him up because he knew he was going to be doing this and he didn't want to die out in the wilderness or whatever. Because he doesn't, it just, he seems so nonchalant about, he, he seems like he's got bad acting skills just about trying to act like he's surviving, but really doesn't, isn't scared. But admittedly, I, I think it'd be hard for his friend to find him. So maybe this is a legitimate story that these people did find him. And again, for his story, it better be because if you know he has no witnesses or anybody to sh co collaborate his story that these farmers picked him up, that's another giant uh, glaring piece of evidence against him, I would say. Um. So then he gets rescued, and then I'm, he like. I've probably been walking six, seven, eight miles already. Uh, Pick up first thing in the morning and start hiking. And then he decides he's going to go back and do what he set out to do, and paraglide off the mountain with his friend. <laughs> Johnny, let's have a great flight down, man. All right. Well, we got the paraglider all laid out. It's a beautiful day. We just spread Johnny's ashes, and we are ready to go. So he, so the other thing people were saying, I heard online that I don't totally, I mean, I'm not a paraglider, so I guess I'm, again, speaking out of my super close realm of expertise here, but um, paragliders, a lot of people said he didn't bring the paraglider with him or... And I almost need to watch this video again, but I'm not going to because I'm sick of watching it. But I th maybe he gets the paraglider out of the plane and starts walking with it. But I don't think that, I think he says he's walking through the woods with his parachute. And it's like, why would you be doing that too? When you're trying to survive, you're, you're hauling a giant parachute around with you. But I don't think that's that big of an evident piece of evidence either way. Because maybe he went to his plane to get his, um, paraglider so he could go still do it but I don't, I don't think he mentions that at all in the video and again it's just so poorly done that you just can't even follow what's going on which leaves this to not look good for him i'm going to start wrapping this up soon because we're getting over an hour here but um i do want to go back and just briefly go over the crash again and say some of the things that now that we kind of have a overall narrative of the story, the things you have more context of what's actually going on during the, um, the video. So let's see if 
quickly here. There's any thing I want to maybe briefly talk about in my notes. Boop, boop, boop. Didn't restart his engine. Odd. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So let's let's go through the plane crash one more time, yeah, and then maybe we can wrap this up. Doing the run up, and we'll be on our way soon. So much love. We'll see you in the air. So the, the first thing I want to, is this full screen? Okay, now I can see it a little better. Um, I'm going to have to wrap this up soon, too, because I got to pee. So, oh, no. I muted it. Let's go back here. Because I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want to get this wrong. To get 10% off at checkout and... Uh, You'll be stoked you did it. That's nice. We'll doing the run-up, and we'll be on our way soon. So, much love. We'll see you in the air. All right. So, actually, first of all, it's here. This thing off to the left here you see hanging there is like a black tube with a silver thing on the end. That's the first thing I wanted to point out that a lot of people have been talking about that I, I do think is odd. And if – so it is in the off position. I think you can – I can see that on this thing. So – that's the fuel selector valve. I showed you that earlier in that diagram. Um, I don't want to bring it back up because it's hard to get the screen share going, but or maybe I can do it here. Oh, oh, well, will it be easy? Maybe. Okay, so I can show you. So this is your fuel selector here up here, and that's the thing dangling there. And what's odd, about that is it's disconnected, it looks like, unless all those fuel lines, because if you look at this, this is obviously a little different than the one in that plane, because that one looks like it's just on or off, where this one has left, right, both off, so there's more positions. And that's because this has an extra feed line, so you have a left tank feed line and a right tank feed line, so you can select between the two or both. Where this one, it looks like it's just on or off, so somehow, I mean, pretty much every airplane has two fuel tanks in each wing for weight issues. So, and I imagine this airplane has fuel tanks in the wing. So the design of that plane might be both the tanks feed together into one line and go in there. I'm not quite sure. Again, I'm not, I'm not a total piston mechanic. So this is a little out of my realm of expertise. I'm more of a jet guy and jets definitely don't tend to have these anymore, especially anymore. Um, so anyways, the one in his cockpit appears to be um, an on-off one that just has a single, it would just have a single in and a single out. So just imagine, where did my mouse go? Like there's no left tank feed line here and, and both tanks feed together into this right line. You know, that both tanks can feed here into this right spot and they would continue to go from there through the rest of the fuel system. And so um, it almost... I mean, just my little two cents on it. It almost looks like they've just gotten, they just plumbed that thing out of the system, which again, if you did that, I don't know why you wouldn't just take it out completely or why you would even do that, I guess, to begin with, because it's kind of a necessary thing. So the whole thing is a little odd, but people have been pointing out like, like that's the cause of the accident or something. I don't think that's necessarily true, um, but it is odd. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of is he somehow you know because this obviously can start this this selector valve you can select it to off and then that causes the engine to no longer get fuel which would cause it to stop working but like it looks like in the picture there's only one line going to it unless those unless there's two lines somehow in there you know together which it really doesn't look like because it looks like there's actually a cap on the selector anyway anyways anyways um, he, he could have potentially maybe used that to do it, but that's like the dumbest. I, I mean, this guy is not a rocket scientist, I guess, but that's like just the dumbest, most obvious 
way to just be like, oh, this was obviously a crash because he just shut the fuel off here. But again, if he's that, I mean, he, I don't think he's clever enough, if that's true, to rig that whole thing up to begin with. He would just go over here. And I wanted to show you this quickly. Oh, did I not bring this up? Shoot, I'm sorry. You have to hear me type a little bit. I apologize. I got a clunky keyboard, but um, I was going to look up airplane flight controls. Uh, cockpit flight controls. Let's try that. Oh, there's the picture I wanted. So in his airplane, it's pretty likely he, I mean, actually I can see just by looking at it. He doesn't have a thick or a constant speed propeller. So his airplane wouldn't have this middle blue one here. Um, but he would likely in his airplane have this throttle here and this mixture over here on the right. And that mixture um, is actually the way everyone turns off their aircraft engines you just pull that out and it starves the engine of fuel basically because uh, you pull it out that should be full lean which means you're just taking off you know you're putting as much air into the system with no fuel as possible which just shuts the engine down if you push it all the way in you go rich which means there's more fuel actually in the engine than there is enough air to burn the fuel so it's almost wasting fuel um, if you're not familiar with what those do. So that I think is another telling part of this video. If you are able to kind of, it, it's hard to see. So, all right, so I showed you the mixture, showed you the throttle, showed you that, showed you the th fuel selector. All right, so let's go back to the video here. boo ba doo ba -doo. Transition. It's in one piece. <laughs> always, this is the one I always throw up on accident. All right. So that's the fuel selector, which is hanging there. You did it. We'll be doing the run-up, and we'll be on our way soon. So much love. We'll see you in the air. You can see it flopping around. But again, so it looks like there's one line. It looks like the second part that it would come out of is capped maybe and then it's in the off position which means the engine wouldn't even be able to take off the engine shouldn't even be running right now to begin with or will run out of fuel very quickly when the the you know the the remaining fuel in the lines runs out but um i just i really don't think that has anything to do with this but i'm not saying that's not janky or it shouldn't even be like that it is it is weird um anyways or, I don't know. Maybe in bush planes, that's where they put them, but it's it's odd. And it seems like a lot of people find out. Okay. This is where I want to pause. Now, if you look here, yeah, he did open his door, I think. You can look at, just look at how that door, it looks like it's kind of open, maybe just a crack. There, You can see that black seam, but it's definitely not... I guess the reason I mentioned that is if you, yeah, that door, is, if you look to his, look, if you're looking at the video and you look over your, like his left shoulder, your right, that door looks shut too. Where if you look over at the other door, maybe there's a tiny, tiny bit of a gap there. And I, I'm just saying that because, especially with these old airplanes, those doors, especially over time, cannot, you know, they just, everything gets beat up. And a lot of times those doors won't close right or whatever and people don't want to fix it or whatever I, and i've heard of like people just bunging doors shut or what especially in bush planes where you know you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere uh, they just bungee the door shut because i mean a lot of airplanes you can fly with the doors off because as long as there's nothing loose in there you know you're wearing a seatbelt, you shouldn't fall out or anything it's not like that's that odd even though it seems a little odd anyways let's really see if this door was Got 
big smile on his face like something big's about to happen. See, he manages to throw in all this stuff about nothing again. Yeah, he definitely opened his door. I was I was not right about I thought maybe I was giving him the benefit of the doubt a little bit that maybe he had a crappy door. But, I mean you can see that probably right there. But if you especially watch the gap on the door like I was telling him about too, you can see it. So doors shut there. Doors open. And I don't think the engine has quit yet. Well, I'm falling out of my chair. This state, this whole set's falling apart. Um, so, door, and the reason I say the door is open is I feel like I can see the inside handle behind the door sticking out. Like if you look at the a very little bit of the handle, you should be able to see sticking over the door. You can see a second handle almost parallel right below it. And then you go to this angle, and that gap is so much larger. I mean, and I, yeah, that's that's. Insane. And now his engine quits. And again, if you just listen to this, man. Sorry, I really gotta go to the bathroom. But uh, tell you what, no, I'm not gonna do that. I was thinking about running in the bathroom and letting you watch some of this, but. I really gotta go to the bathroom, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and wait. So I'm gonna try and wrap this up here pretty quickly. And I'm not just making that up then this this the show like an elaborate lie like this guy does. Okay. What I really want to see if there's at any point you can see those throttles and mixture controls in the cockpit very well because if it's if it's pulled all the way out, that's that's I just feel like that's what he did because he's just not that smart and he just he just shut the engine off, which is I, I, that's what I was gonna say. The NTSB are not stupid, and if they don't find anything wrong with this plane, which they might not, you know. It's like, well, why did the engine stop? You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Which you think is pretty hard to prove once it's crashed, but they're pretty good. It's pretty amazing. So, again, not a cat catastrophic stop here. It sounds like it just ran out of fuel. And he, he, do he doesn't, I don't, you know, th the thing that's the most blatant to me is he doesn't try to restart it once. It's just, and then this, this is what other people are saying here, which I guess if I can jump back to that other picture, I'll show you real quick. But he starts, he starts pulling back on the yoke really hard, almost making it look like the airplane's about to stall. And again, this is getting a little bit out of my realm of expertise because I'm not a pilot, but there's a stall speed, which is the absolute minimum speed an airplane can go. And then there's your best glide speed. But, I mean, okay, I'll bring this picture up here real quick. Um, this chart kind of really says it well. Excuse me. Um, I don't know what plane this is, but this is just some random example I, I pulled off the internet. But um, so here's your stall speed right here, I think. Uh, let's say it's like, looks like it's 30 knots or something. Which again, that's really low. It's lower than this plane even. And then you have your minimum sink rate, 
I think is what that's saying. And that's going to be your best speed for your best glide ratio. But you can see it's not a ton. I mean, you're definitely down towards the slow end of this airplane. Um, I think this is actually the speed the airplane can go. So it's, you know, you would stall here and then this is the max speed of the airplane. And then where these two lines meet, that's your, uh, that's your best glide speed. So it's like right here, maybe, I don't, I don't know why they're pointing here. Anyways, not a professional at doing this, obviously, as you can see, but I just wanted to show you this. So you get the idea that, you know, your stall speeds down here. If you go any slower than that, you'll just fall out of the air. So you, obviously you don't want to go that slow. And then your, your best glide, I don't know. So your best glide and minimum sink. I'm not a pilot. Those are probably different terms, but they're closely related enough, I think. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make here is the but your best glide speed is not necessarily super much higher than your stall speed, but it's definitely not your stall speed. Like they're two different numbers and you don't want to get close to your stall speed. Um, but when your engine does go out, you do want to use your best glide ratio speed, whatever you want to call it. So you have an optimized glide to make it as far as possible. Like that's the whole point here, I guess. Um, so when your engine does quit, you want to make your aircraft produce that maximum glide rate. And what people are, so if I go back to the video now, uh, I'm getting better at this, I swear. I had to say that. No, I'm going to screw it up. All right. Back to the video. Gliding. So, do some snowboarding. Uh, dang it. It's going to be a super good. I got to go to the bathroom. Um, I just can't wrap this video up as much as I'm trying. The so the uh, what he's trying to do here is, or what he's been accused of doing here is, if if your engine stops, it, especially in the way it did, and this proves it, and it's not catastrophic. The engine's still able to spin from the the wind is still, you know, this this airplane's still flying. There's still wind coming at it. That wind is. Um, putting pressure on that prop and wanting it to spin because it's an airfoil. It's going to, I think, want to spin in the opposite direction it normally would, which is why you actually see, it looks like it kind of stops and then speeds back up for a second. And I think that's in reversing directions almost, maybe. I could be wrong about that. But again, there's so little. See right there, it looks like maybe a reverse direction. And then what he's been accused of trying to do here is put the aircraft as close to stall as he could by pulling back on the yoke and getting as close to the stall is that's your slowest speed you can fly. Slowest speed means slower air on that propeller. He's trying, what he's been accused of is trying to get the propeller to stop spinning. So he gets a cool shot that makes it look like the engine quit because this obviously is not a catastrophic engine failure. So it, the, the, uh, the propeller keeps spinning and some other people commented too once he jumps out of the airplane the propeller starts spinning again too that's because it picks up speed it looks like you know and this it's causing the same thing to happen so again this is i don't think this is a complete the guy's obviously not a great pilot so if that's his way of trying to get to um you know pitching for best glide angle he's not maybe doing the best job, but I think he could maybe make the statement that's what he's trying to do here, not necessarily stop the propeller. Um, again, I'm not saying one's true either way. It's just what people are saying. So take it take it for what you will. But he does get the propeller to stop for a cool shot. I guess I'll pause this. Just, you, want, you, you want my downright theory? This guy's an idiot. This was his whole plan. And he, he opened his 
he just somehow mistakenly, the, I think the worst one is, is the door being open because it proves that he was basically looking for a spot to make sure he could jump out like before he shut the engine down. I just think that's the most damning piece of evidence here because why else would the door happen to be ajar? But I, I mean, again, freak things act. Maybe he was hot, you know, things happen. I'm not saying any one of these one things is, you know, like I've said, it's a totality of circumstances. Just all these things add up to be pretty crazy. So. Oh, oh. Like this guy said earlier, I don't know if I said it in the comments. It seems like the F word is the only thing on his checklist. Like the guy, as far as what he shows, he shows nothing. As far, I mean, he just is like, oh, man, ah, jump out. And the problem is people haven't, you know, like I said, being dumb is not a crime. So they got to prove he did something uh, bad. Let's watch, watch him jump out one more time here. I gotta go to the bathroom, uh, so we're gonna wrap so this up. I'm super uh, grateful he'll be joining us. Gotta give a shout, shout out to the Ridge up. Wallet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I got a quick trivia question for you guys, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Hopefully, you enjoy this video. I hope you got some sort of value out of it. Maybe you learned something that you haven't seen on these other videos on YouTube, but it's, it's certainly an interesting story to me, at least. It's very bizarre. Um, so, trivia question is. Uh, the last video I did on relative motion was about the Jetson one hover or uh, whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a flying machine. So that uh, has a very short range compared to a lot of other aerial vehicles. And the question is, and you have to get within 10%, that's the rule. Um, what is the range of that vehicle, the Jetson one? What is the range of the Jetson one? The first person to put that in the comments uh, if, if you're interested, I have a relative motion sticker. I will send you your way uh, if you want to throw that answer down in the comments. And, and the quicker, the better, because I got to pee. Um, and just to give you some context, like a small airplane or a small helicopter, like similar size, maybe can go 100 miles. And this is much less. I'm going to play some more random videos while you guys are answering. Let's see whether, oh. Mm. Scares people. So, so here's some of his other just, uh, cringy so we videos. we put a train horn made. in my truck. He put a train horn in his truck. Just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff this guy does. Um, he puts a train horn in his truck and goes around and scares people. Really nice. Yeah, you want to hear it? Yeah. Cool guy, right? And then me to step out of the vehicle now, please. Sometime today. I mean, it's pretty obvious it's fake, but he hired, he has a fake cop in the video pull him over. And like I said, I, I don't think he's trying to make it seem like it's real, but it's it's just another one. I was like, oh, so you have a video where you stage a cop pulling you over. 
Hmm. Sir. Interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna need all of you to step out of the vehicle now, please. Looks like Whitney asked where he was flying to. Pop the hood, please. Mammoth, California, maybe. I haven't found a train horn. I've just I bought it used, but um. Some like. Everybody gets out on the grid right now. Man, this guy. Should make too much fun. We can all make bad videos, but this this video is not that great. <laughs> get there! Get there! Oh, he's get so there. funny. Oh, my ankles. Calm down. Calm down. Ow. Oh, Teach you kids. Oh. Alright, does anyone have oh. the range of the Jetson oh, one? Come on, come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it chill. about. Chill. Uh, Get down on the ground. I'm about to fix all those. You don't want to do crap? No, I don't. <laughs> My mom's gonna be so upset. Down on the ground. Ah, dude. Alright. You turn this thing off. Cool video, Jacob. Oh, what else do you got? Oh, that's the new He says he always wears a parachute. So here's a video. I was the last video of him LAX, flying. I knew the weather and was bad. And he does have a parachute on in man all through the entire thing. I, Ten seconds. We're as far gonna, as I can tell. The, the Again, I, I try not to get it. I didn't want to spend days. It pushes all the way down the face of the mountain. Guy, give him the and attention that he doesn't it's such strong right? winds just, that if like a pilot or a plane gets into that That's a disservice zero, to people uh, like this because they don't you know, really deserve much attention cycle, to begin with. Which is but, uh, uh, the Sierra wave. Then um, you can't get out of it. So if you're full power, you're trying to pull out of uh, it. The oh, wind we have is just too what strong going down to just push you right down into the mountain. So that's what has been, you know, thought of as so again here's him telling these awesome stories because no parachute highly suspect thank you for watching my video um whitney i will uh if you want to if you want to contact magic.opus opus at gmail.com i can send you that sticker i can send that sticker your way and if you haven't have any vehicles you might be interested in me reviewing on this show. I'm always interested for that. I'm working on getting that email more into videos to throw this out as an idea. But if you have any vehicles that you think would be interesting, to s I can't even talk. That's piece of man. If you have any interesting videos to show on, I, <laughs> if you have any, oh, you get the point. If you have a cool vehicle to show on this channel, maybe send me an email there. Until next time, I'm James Bodie. And you've been watching Relative Motion. Thanks for joining.